What in the world is up guys? Welcome back to the Butterfly Diary. I'm sitting outside of my doctor's office right now. I thought it would be the perfect time since I haven't put out a video in a while. Just kind of uh, update you guys on what's been going on. I haven't been putting out any videos. It made me think I should do a video on lupus must-haves because I've been wanting to put that out for a really long time and I feel like with everything going on right now, it's the perfect video to um, start. I guess season two of the butterfly diary so that's pretty much what i'm gonna be doing today so let's go ahead and get started before i get into the lupus must have this is just personally what i consider items that range from things that you need for work medical emergencies to just items to help you get throughout your day when i get home actually i'll probably show you guys because i don't really have anything with me right now so why not just start by giving you guys a little bit of an update I guess I started out this channel thinking that I was going to be consistent as I wanted to be. Prior to even starting the channel, I had pretty much planned out at least half of the year's videos. I was doing pretty well at the beginning despite um, my health condition and everything, depending on how I was feeling on these particular days and things like that. I think at first I was putting this pressure on myself to feel like I had the responsibility to put out that message because there's not a lot of people out there that have platform specifically dedicated to autoimmunity and lupus that your health is always going to be the priority i think that that's the main message to relay not only on camera but off camera season one was just very basic stuff talking about what lupus was talking about my story and you guys basically just getting to know me i really want to continue with that but finally making that diagnosis just a regular part of life in a way that's not so overwhelming i guess after i put out my last video i have pretty much been stable in regards to my my lupus condition as well as the kidney function that i had been dealing with um early on had told you guys earlier that i had experienced close to kidney failure and that i had to um, go through this whole aggressive treatment to try to get my kidneys back to 100%. Most of the organs and uh, systems that had been attacked by my lupus are pretty much under control now, except for I did have a concern with my lungs where I did have cysts. I had them in my ovaries, but I also had this in between my lungs. That was initially put off because of every other more serious a concern at that time and so now that my lupus and my kidney function have become stable-ish then you know the doctors can focus now more on the secondary health issue now the focus of trying to remove those cysts because unfortunately it has become a little bit of a struggle i went to a surgeon a couple of weeks ago i think i was just mentally preparing myself for something normal and like the first time i guess i didn't learn from the first time from when i first got diagnosed just expecting it to be something not so serious just because i don't know i don't feel that that sense of my respiratory system that i'm being affected to the point where i need to have surgery or anything like that it goes to show that you know you can look okay and still be completely just not healthy in, in, the, in the way that we perceive ourselves to be. This is just aside from having lupus or not, but even if you are the, or you think you're the healthiest person, it's always a good idea to can take care of ourselves. I know, especially in our early 20s, we tend to be the ones to take the least amount of care towards ourselves. I think it's just all in that mentality of I'm young, so I can't ever have anything wrong with me in the physical sense. And so, Clearly that's not it's not the reality most of the time. When I went out of town to go see this surgeon, this is just something else that I'm having to deal with. I kind of talked to my doctor today also about it. He said it was pretty normal, but anxiety when you're put in environments that um, trigger memories of you know your previous medical traumas, I wasn't aware of that at all. I thought it was maybe just me overreacting. Um, so when I stepped into the hospital, I had a mini anxiety attack. And then on top of that, having the surgeon explain to me, apparently the, the cyst has grown now to seven centimeters, which is not 
the smallest cyst to say the least. It's filled with flexus fluid from who knows where. They weren't able to identify a cause. They don't even know if it's something that my lupus caused or if it was something that I was born with, but it's something that definitely needs to be removed. So he went over the whole procedure with me. It's a robotic procedure, which makes me a little bit anxious, even though I, I guess I should be more relieved that it's robotics and not hands-on, um, since it is more of a precise procedure. And he explained that to me, but of course, I'm the patient in the moment. I've, I'm already having an anxiety attack from being in that environment and just kind of him just telling me, these are the tools, these are the knives, these are who knows what he's gonna use during the procedure. It was just a little bit too much at the time for me, but um, yeah, I ended up getting through that. And so I've been kind of trying to prepare myself mentally and physically for that surgery. I've also been traveling, so that is the other reason why I haven't been filming that much. Um, just because I'm trying to take advantage whenever my body allows me, I'm going to take the opportunity to travel or to do whatever it is that I want to do. Those are basically the two main reasons why I haven't been filming and I'm going to try to be a little bit more consistent and um, I might even take you guys along in the process of the surgery and everything if they allow me to. That is pretty much my update. Let's get into the lupus must-haves. So I made it back to my house and I have with me my little bag filled with all of my lupus must-haves. Before I can open this, this is actually the first must-have that I wanted to talk about. It looks like a regular bag. It is a regular bag actually, but on the list just because I think that it's really important that every patient should have a backup hospital bag. I know that this is just a regular bag. Really just any bag that you can just grab and get out of the door if you're ever in an emergency where you need to get to the hospital as soon as possible. Early on in my lupus journey, I would carry this around with me all of the time because I really didn't know where or who I was going to be with at what time so I just had to mentally and physically prepare myself in case of an accident wherever and whenever I would be so let's open this bag here I think I did talk about this in another video about journaling different symptoms that you might have even your emotional thoughts that you might be going through because especially early on doctors will be trying to monitor your symptoms as closely as possible and especially with brain fog that can be very difficult remembering and recalling all of that information so it's really cool to just have a journal to jot down all of your symptoms keep track of them and it's also really cool to then you know go back and see how much progress you've made so the next thing are anything related to blocking you from the sun we know from previous videos and from research and all of those things that the sun can be a very dangerous thing for patients with lupus um, because it can cause flare-ups and so i always try to carry with me either an umbrella and or sunscreen and i always try to get as much spf as possible honestly i don't know if that's true but i would assume that the more spf the more protective it could be of your skin so i always try to get the highest spf possible the next thing that i wanted to talk about was issue and this was this is a very personal item even though it might just looks like a box of tissues but this was key in my overall lupus journey especially when dealing with the fungal infection in my lungs because i would be coughing sniffling popping up phlegm 24 7. i didn't have anywhere if i was out in public that i couldn't spit or i couldn't cough or i couldn't sneeze or whatever i would always have a handy box and i would fly through these literally two boxes three boxes a day so this was a very key item in my lupus journey but it might be different so i will say some of these items are specific to me and they might not necessarily apply to your must-haves but these are just things that i personally needed to have with me at all times next thing is actually in regards to things that help secondary symptoms so things like headaches things like muscle aches or sore um body aches things like that's actually one that my doctor recommended because of the three percent menthol and everything else that is on there i won't say that they cure the pain or anything but they do really help um, sometimes to ease the pain and a lot of the times i will either sleep with these or even 
go on about my day just wearing one of these behind my neck or wherever it is that I might have pain. I also every now and then take a, a natural herbal supplement to help with my sleeping because ever since the prednisone it's become very difficult for me to get back into the rhythm of my sleep. So every now and then I will take a sleep aid. This one is straight just melatonin and other types of herbs. Um, camel. recommend anything that is natural. The more natural the better. All right, so moving right along, I know that I had done in a previous video something on beauty tips for lupus patients, but um, I don't think that I had this product at that time and I hadn't really tried it. So I think I'm just gonna mention really quick another beauty related tip and probably one of the most important things is having wipes and get really good wipes, make sure that they're not um, they don't contain any alcohol or anything like that if you are sensitive in your skin Just because a lot of the times we are just prone to more fatigue and things like that And a lot of the times it does take a lot of energy to even get up to go wash your face I know that that's a hard thing enough for anyone So it, it does help to have some wine because you don't want having to sleep with that residue overnight Because I have made that mistake and has made me just quickly realize how prone I am to getting infections in my eyes just from one night of falling asleep with my makeup so it's really important if you don't have the energy to get up and wash your face at least to have some wipes something to help you um, prevent yourself from getting eye infections from one night of not washing your face. I also wanted to talk about bio oil because I know that bio oil is something that um, a lot of people have recommended to me. I was really skeptical about it because I had tried a lot of different creams for stretch marks. If I have the courage, I'll go ahead and post my stretch marks because they are not like anything else I have seen anyone else had. And unfortunately, I have scarring and stretch marks regarding my kidney. I found that the only thing that really has helped until now is bio oil. So it is a little bit of a pricier product just because, I mean, it only really has 4.2 fluid ounces for $15. A little bit exaggerated if you ask for me, but it really, really, really does help with these kinds of stretch marks. All right, so we're getting through this list. I only have two more items to show you guys. I saved the two most important ones for last. So medication organizer thingies. I have this one. I have this one here, which comes with a little case. It's kind of like a travel size um, pill organizer thing for if you're traveling over the weekends. And at first, this was definitely a must because I was taking over 20 different medications and you know, it's very hard to keep track of them unless you have something like this that will help you. And that way you can just see in the morning I took this and the afternoon I take this and you can keep track of it that way. You just keep them in there. Um, and yeah, the very, very last thing and probably one of my favorite things that I'm going to show you is let me show you right now because i want to these they're little foxes but they're really socks so these are fuzzy socks they're probably the most important thing on this list i also have these here and the reason for that is because these are compression fuzzy socks actually these are the ones that they gave me in the hospital i have like i don't even know how many pairs of these the same yellow sock especially during the winter time with colds having unprotected feet a lot of the uh the time cold weather or cold environments can lead to um restriction of your joints and things like that you know we already have enough pain in our joints so fuzzy socks very much help to restrict the cold from coming in contact with our system and making joint pains even worse. Oh, I also have these, they're just regular socks, but if you look at the bottom, they come with these little things that are anti-slip. Your compression socks usually that they give you at the hospital, they also have this, you know, this is the one good thing, free thing that we get out of the hospital. So take advantage of them. Don't throw them away because you never know when you need them and they basically give them for free so that's pretty much only thing that i have left to say i hope that you guys enjoyed this new video starting off the new season of the butterfly diary and we will hopefully see you really soon right bye